It's not necessary for me to discuss with this group the desire and the need to do something uh, about the federal population problem. You already know what the problem is. A neutered cat is not going to contribute to the federal population problem. Wow, isn't that profound? There certainly is a clear place to start, though, isn't it? It's not the only place to start, but it's the only real full group method that we have. In 1991, a survey was conducted by the Massachusetts SBCA, and it was most revealing. From a random sample of 500 pet-owning households, they asked quite a number of questions. An amazing 87% of households that were cat-owning said that their cats were neutered. And 73% of dog-owning households said that their dogs were neutered. I submit that anywhere those are often good figures. You would be pretty proud of them any place. Yet, Boston area was still having a problem. They weren't getting on top of it. Well, one of the other questions that was asked shed a little bit of light. Quite a bit of light. One, when asked, did your female have a litter before she had, was spayed, one in five said yes. That's 20%. That isn't going to get the job done. Because what you have is a, an animal that is replacing itself and four others from a litter of five, as we expect about five on a litter of cats, and we expect uh, more than that from a litter of dogs. In my clinics, we see this all the time, and especially June, July, and August, where the cats are coming in and they have already had a litter. When I bother to take the time or have the opportunity to engage some of these clients as to uh, uh, was this a planned parentage? Was this planned? Did you go out and find a boy? Knowing full well what the answer is. No, they, they didn't. Uh, um, gee, they were waiting for them to get older enough. And uh, things had come up. They just didn't get around to it. She became in heat. And it happened. There's nothing they could do about it. It happened. Well, uh, you know, it always happens. Almost always happens. We have a new tool in our arsenal. In the early 1980s, there were some uh, men and women in the vision that were involved with some uh, humane associations and some shelters. And those people decided that they were tired of seeing the recycling of the animals that they had adopted out of litters of them coming back. And they decided to adopt a neuter at adoption policy. And they did that for uh, quite a number of years. And over a period of time, Dr. Leo Lieberman, a retired veterinarian who was very interested, had a real passion in this particular area, had been reading them. And he authored a most compelling report and plea for early age neutering in the September 1987 Journal of Veterinary Medical Association. Well, with this interest created, the tra traditionalists and alarmists literally came out of the woodwork. No, no, no. What are you doing? What are you saying? We're taking steps backwards. Penny, penny the sky is falling. The what if solvos started being tossed up to us in reckless abandon. What if this? What if that? And those what ifs were anything that sounded like it could be some reason to be concerned about. Well, my feeling is that in truth, that for nearly half a century we had been taught, and by tradition, we had established a proper time for neuter, and to do an exaggerated about face at this time was just a little bit more than we could swallow. It would be like we're having to say we've been doing it wrong all this time. What about those solvers, those concerns? They need to be answered. Not, I make a little bit light of them. They need to be tended to. Uh, they come under two paired headings when you look at them. Developmental and health, and sur surgical and anesthetic. One of the more helpful technical articles in that issue was undertaken and reported by the University of Florida. This study, at the time it was published and submitted, was a 15-month effort studying the effects of prepubertal gonadectomy on skeletal growth, weight gain, food intake, body fat, secondary sex characteristics, and behavioral development. 
32 male and female puppies were divided into three groups. These groups, group one, were neutered at seven weeks of age. The second group, group two, was neutered at seven months of age, quite the traditional time. And of course, the third group were unneutered controls. The core conclusion that came out of it was that the major, the, the major differences between those who were neutered at seven weeks of age and those that were neutered at seven months of age were statistically insignificant. There were some differences between those of the neutered groups and the unneutered group. Now, we're not debating whether to neuter or not to neuter because we all know and feel that that has great advantages both health-wise for the pet and for the sociological advantages. What we're doing and trying to establish is what is the proper age to do the neuter. Dr. Bloomberg, German professor of small animal surgery at the University of Florida, gave a report in San Diego in October 1992. Again, the total number of the cats in this case was 31. The grouping breakdown was seven weeks of age, seven months of age, neutering, and the unneutered controls. That study was summed up in two lines. Quote, it was concluded that the neutering at seven weeks of age and seven months of age had similar effects on skeletal, physical, and the behavioral development in the domestic cat, close quote. Two of the most asked concerns and uh, their findings. Growth plate closure. Both dogs and cats, this was the same, so I'm talking about both. The growth plate is that portion of the long bone where growth develops. And as long as that plate is not considered closed, growth takes place. Well, what was happening is that the groups, both groups that uh, were neutered, the growth plates didn't close quite as soon, and therefore growth continued longer, and the animals actually got a little bit bigger than their counterpart litter mates. There goes that solo. If you do them early, you're going to stunt their growth. <laughs> okay. That would shot right out the window. I mean, big style. The other one, the penis. Penile development in the cat. That was, of course, Dr. Bloomberg reported on that. It was measured four ways. Okay. No penis to be waste. Measured four ways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they figured out how to do it and did. And the result was that there was no difference. Matter of fact, the diameter of the urethra was the same for all three groups. That's a biggie. That's a real biggie because that's the one that the most people were concerned about because of the, the disease known as FUS, feline urological syndrome. While the hormones have never been incriminated as playing an effect on them getting the disease, there are many other factors that have to come together, including diet and a few other things, that some cats are predisposed to it. And if they get it, one of the problems, of course, is that they get this sludge, slurge, and uh, crystals. And in the male penis, why it comes down a little stricture and it will get plugged up. Well, before I knew what the answers of this study was, I still rationalized in my own mind that even if it does, so we find out if the cat has F-U-S this week instead of waiting three or four more weeks before it finally did plug up because it's, it's going to happen and you're going to then go back and uh, have to take care of the disease process. So anyhow, that is now not one of the major things to worry about. We'll give one little aside. Group one had no penile spine development. Group number two had minimal penile spine development. And of course, the third group had normal penile spine development. I'm sure somebody out there is going to build a case on psychological effects of that male cat who is preening himself and all of a sudden gets down to the subject area and says, oh my gosh, I don't have any penile spines. <laughs> I don't think he's going to care. He certainly isn't going to use them. Okay, these studies and the results combined with the lack of anyone else finding anything else to worry about 
It's pretty much convinced those who bother to look into early age neutering that it is a medically acceptable procedure. Okay. Now back to the other pair, the surgical and anesthetic safety concerns. We have moved through the latter part of this century um, just balking forward with the progression of uh, anesthetics that are available to us. For me, they're moving to metaphane, to halothane, to isofluorine, and uh, a number of injectables that, that are almost getting too numerous to count, all of which are readily and easily detoxified. We can use such things as cocktails, mixtures of combinations of them, so that the, uh, the safety of doing anesthetic on the ne neophyte and the juvenile patient is now routinely safe. Uh, additionally, their, their rebound following surgery is just short of miraculous. Um, I did mention uh, the words neophyte patient and juvenile patient, and I didn't give any definitions of it, just so that uh, I don't leave you hanging on that. The neophyte is a puppy or kitten that is up to 12 weeks of age. A juvenile, then, is a puppy or kitten from 12 weeks of age on to puberty, whenever that puberty is. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking that Dr. Mackey is on a campaign to neuter every single prepubescent neophyte that he can get his hands on. That isn't true. If the pet is a pup and it's under four months of age, we key the neutering appointment around the vaccination program, recommending neutering at the same time as the rabies vaccination. Even if there was another vaccination coming after the rabies, key it with the rabies. With the rabies, um, you get a reduction in the price of the license when you get them uh, when you get them registered, and also most clinics will have a price differential, and the younger animal is not going to weigh as much. Therefore, you're probably going to get a cheaper study. I see no need to subject either the pet or the owner to puberty's reproductive wake-up call and to the stress that goes with keeping determined breeding machines apart. Waiting two or more months after the neuter, after two, two neuter after the last vaccination, is to invite forgetfulness. So people tend to forget. The focal of attention is on that pet during that younger, earlier days. And if they get it done then, it does become something else they have to remember. Since uh, the April 1991 Jobma issue, there's been serious reviewing and evaluating of these studies. And I'd like to bring you up to date on the reading of the prestigious list of endorsements to date. May 1992, CBMA, the California Veterinary Medical Association Board of Governors, and I quote, moved, seconded, and passed that the CBMA supports the concept of early, for an unthetically 8 to 16 week of age, close quote. October 1992, AHA, the American Humane Association, their policy endorsement of prepubescent uh, neutering as a feasible solution to the pet overpopulation. July 1993, just a couple of months ago, the ABMA, the American Veterinary Medical Association, House of Delegates, adopted the exact wording of the California Medical Association's Two weeks later, the AKC, the American Kennel Club, added to their spay-neuter policy a sentence that said and included they endorsed early age, 8 to 16 weeks, as a part of theirs. September, just early this month, just a few weeks ago, the HSUS, the Humane Society of the United States, that they has adopted a position of support for early spay and neutering. Animal control shelters must help us get the word out and, and spread around that it is okay. And they must get into position the neutering and adoption policies. I'll start maybe with pit bulls, rottweilers, and Nikitas. An obvious reason to do so. Some uh, liability uh, possibilities uh, in that and those animals. Then when you get those going, you've got a veterinarian who will do them. You start moving over and include the purebreds. Then when you get through then you get comfortable, you can handle the purebreds and the veterinarian can, then you move on and you start doing them for all of them. Work into it slowly if need be. In-house clinic or can sign out. Each community will have to sort that one out for themselves. I have definite and strong opinions on that. There's no time for that. <laughs>